Okay, intro to matrix math. Now this is going to be like a really key um, um, chapter to understand how transforms work in Maya. As with the vector, it's going to be just a, a kind of overview of some of like the key principles and techniques that we need to know to be able to work with it in Maya. So there's definitely a lot more to learn and understand, but hopefully this will give you a brief and decent introduction to how you can work with this in Maya. So what is a matrix? Well, a matrix is unfortunately like the movie from uh, the 90s, but it's a rectangular array of numbers. It is arranged in rows and columns, which basically will have our rows going across and our columns going down. Now, the most common matrix in computer graphics is usually the 4x4. Um, where we will use all of the kind of numbers except for the last column. In Maya, you will see the 4x4 matrix node, which will have, it's not really laid out in this um, array here. It's uh, more in a, in a long list of numbers where you will see these 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and then we'll go 10, 11, 12, 13. So that might be a bit confusing, but it's basically referring to the rows and columns. So this is the zero row, the one row, the second row, third, um, and then this is zero column, one column, two column, three column. Now, one thing to be uh, just mentioned now that we'll, we'll touch on a bit more is the uh, term identity matrix. Now, this is a square matrix that is completely filled with zeros except for the di diagonal. And it is this diagonal we're talking about. It's not the other one. Uh, it's going from top left to bottom right. So what does the matrix actually represent? Well, the top three rows is basically representing uh, rotation. So you all might also hear in some places um, talking about a three by three matrix. And that would basically be what they're talking about then. A 3x3 three three matrix will store rotations. Now, each of the um, rows is a vector. So this would be your um, uh, your vector for the x-axis. This would be your vector for the y-axis. And this is your vector for the z-axis. And the bottom row is used for translation. That's basically why a 3x3 three three matrix can define translation sorry, rotation, but it can't define translation because we need that fourth row. So this brings us back to the identity matrix here. Basically what the identity matrix in terms of computer graphics mean is that our transform is zeroed out. It's at zero, zero, zero. Um, there's no rotations. So as I mentioned here, each of these is a vector. So if we look at the x vector, uh, sorry, the x axis, keep keep skipping off the x axes and vectors here. So do do bear with me. You can basically see that that indicates that the axis is going one unit down the x axis, while the y axis is going one unit up the x axis. Oh, sorry, in the in the coordinates uh, system here. So. How does it look like when we rotate? Well, it basically looks like this. So what you can see here now is for each of the axes, we now have a new vector. Basically what this says, right, is that to get, we to figure out where we need to place the X axis, we need to go 0 0.84 down X, and then we need to go 0 0.45 up in Y, and we need to go negative minus 0 0.2. And that's where we end up with the x-axis. And the same for like this said, we will go 0.36, we'll go negative 0 0.1, we'll go almost one over to get to that point. So that's basically how we represent translations um, in a matrix. If we add in translation, that's just a pure kind of movement vector. The same thing that you will see in on your transform in Maya, you know, 
this is x, this is y, and this is z. So you can see for this one, we've now taken the rotation that we have, we have the exact same numbers, and we've moved it down the x-axis, 2.24, and moved it up, 1.492. So what we can also do with this is um, get a scale out of this. Now the scale basically comes from the length of the axis. So you can see here, if I basically say that the x-axis is going minus 2, that will basically give this transform a scale of minus 2 in the x-axis, while it will have 1 in y and 1 in z, because that's the length of those vectors, of, of, of the vectors representing those axes. If we start to move away from having perpendicular axes here, then we basically start to introduce shearing in the transform as well. So, as before, we will have completely perpendicular axes, 90 degrees between each of them, so it's 90 here, 90 here, and 90 here. But as soon as we start doing this, so that we've moved the x-axis, one over in x as well, we're basically um, introducing shearing because we're now not perpendicular to all these different axes. Cool, so what does it represent again? It's a coordinate space for point and vectors. It's basically what your transform can do in Maya. All of the things that you can represent with a vector uh, sorry, with the matrix, is what you can do with the transform in Maya. You can sort of think of it as, if you look at this representation here, each of these points is just one of many possible locations in that coordinate space, right? Imagine that this is a group, and all of these different points is like a locator or just another transform inside that group inside that group now so what you need to uh, so what happens is as soon as you start to modify that top group you will start to modify all of the children of that group as well right but we don't change the values of that because it's happening in that coordinate space right it's basically happening locally to that space and that's basically what we're doing with um, when we're manipulating a matrix is that we're manipulating a whole space. So that's why you can see here when we rotate, we rotate each of these points. Right? So we shear them, we will scale, we translate, and we rotate. So that's basically the things that you can do with the matrix. You can do translation, rotation, scale, and shear. So what does this mean for shapes, like meshes or anything like that? Well, it means exactly the same thing. Because if you think about what a shape or like a, any geometry actually is, it's just a collection of points. So if you think of like this cube, it's actually made up of these different points. And you can almost think of these as, you know, vectors from a, that is being deformed by this matrix. So to do all of the, the kind of main workhorse of the, um, the matrix um, math is matrix multiplication. It's sort of the same idea as vector addition, but you will also get rotation, scale, and shear, because that is a, is a component of, or those have, are functions in the, uh, in the matrix. So, with, unlike with vector additions, you have to be certain of the order. The order will drastically change how your final result will look like. To actually do matrix multiplication, you have to do, you have to take each row and dot product them with each column. Um, 
you can use the multi matrix node in Maya for this as well, so you don't have to do it manually. But let's just jump through quickly with these two matrices to just show what it actually entails. So let's say that we have them and we want to multiply them. What we have to do is first, we'd have to take this row and do the dot product against this column. So you can see one, one times eight. So it's one, eight, and there'll be nine, two, nine, two. And then we plus that together. And then we'd have, we have to do that against the next column as well. So it'll be one, uh, sorry, one, five, one, five, nine, seven, nine, seven. And then we do the same thing for three, three, eight, and then so on. So three, eight, four, two, three, eight, four, two. And then you have to do three, five, four, seven, three, five, four, seven. Thankfully, we don't have to do that, uh, but that's the main idea of how it would, if it will work. And if you do all these together, this is what you end up with. So you can see this doesn't make too much sense for us right here, but it would still work in any shape of like however larger matrix you would do. Now, let's just look at how it actually would work if we multiply together some transforms. So I've got these two transforms animated here. Now, let's look at what happens if we multiply the left one by the right one. So you can see now what we're, we're taking both those matrices and we basically apply it to the uh, the cube. So what happens is that first you're going to get the cube is going to get all of this, and then it will be modified by this again, like on top of that. So if you notice here, notice that when the rotation has happened here, when this moves in down x this cube actually moves down x here because what's happened is it's now being modified within the coordinate space of this new one here right so all the rotations and the scale and all that still happens but you can see that now when this moves forward that just offset it completely with this because that lives within this transform now so let's see how this looks if we change this around. So if we take the, the right times by the left. So you can now see that because we rotate, we rotate from this point. So now we will actually shift this out. And also note that when this translates, it will move along the axis of this because that's the starting point. Because basically what's happening is all of this like movement happens so it will, it will translate down here and then you can think of all of this thing happening afterwards so it will actually it will move down and then it will rotate out so we're just doing it here in a couple of different steps but that is the main idea of what's happening here one thing to be um, aware of is what's called the inverse matrix now the inverse matrix, you can think of it as the same as when we multiply a vector by minus one. We basically get the negative version of that vector. It's it's different in terms of it's not as straightforward as just doing a multiply, like multiply by minus one. But the same idea applies that if we take the matrix and we multiply it, by the inverse matrix, it will return the identity matrix. So basically they will cancel out, right? Just as if you have a vector and you add the negative vector of that, they're going to cancel out. So what you can see here is I've got this transform and this matrix you can think of, right? And that's moving. And what we're seeing here is the result of the inverse matrix of this. And I'm if I multiply these together, you're actually just going to get a completely static transform at the origin. Now, you can see here that 
as soon as we deal with share, scale, you know, translation, that all looks like pretty much what you would expect as the kind of like the flipped or the mirrored version. But as soon as we then rotate it, you can see that starts to look a bit off again. And, you know, it's it's sort of the same thing, but it's all to do with because of like all the scaling. Um, so it's definitely just to be aware of that. It's super useful to to know about the inverse matrix and it's really, really powerful to allow us to really modify and deal with these things. Now, let's quickly look at the matrix transform order in Maya. So these are all the matrices that is used in Maya to come to the final um, position of a, of a transform. Now, the key ones here is basically this. First, we scale, then we shear, then we rotate, and then we translate. That basically looks like this, right? So we translate, we rotate, we shear, and we scale. Now, what would happen if we change that order? Well, this would happen, right? We would translate, and they would rotate, end up here, we'd shear, down there and then we'd scale off so you can see there's quite a big difference in the way that we we deal with these uh, matrices here now i've done this this is basically a representation of each of the matrices that happens so you can see what happens here is first that the translation because the translation happens at the very end all of the scale the shear and the rotation, you can think of that as all happening at the origin. So there's you're not going to get any weird offsets. And then at the very end, they're being translated away. While if we do it the other way around, the translation will move them away, will move away first, and then all the others will still happen at the origin, and therefore we get the weird rotation around because it's rotating around the origin and it will be sharing around the origin, and it will be scaling from the origin, which is why the um, the whole shape is scaling out as well. You can do this, uh, basically replicate this um, as well, if you want, by doing a couple of um, Maya groups. Now, you can just create, this is basically what I did for the previous one. I created some Maya groups for each individual um, action. So translation, rotation, shear, scale, and then I just parented any geometry at the last, uh, underneath the scale group. Now, if you go and just do translation and you just do rotation, you just do shear and scale on these, you're going to replicate what the Maya transformation matrix does. So if you want to end up with the, the weird kind of whatever this is, you would just end up um, reversing this so that instead of having translation first you do scale and then you do shear as the second one and you'd have rotation as the third one here and translation at the very last if you do that and then you should be able to replicate this exact setup here cool so that was a kind of quick and rough introduction to some, some very big topics and um I hope some of this made sense. We will definitely be working through this in the kind of coming videos. So if everything didn't make perfect sense now, do stick with it and hopefully it'll kind of click together.